Hi, this is going to be a demonstration of working with contingency tables and tests for association using JMP. We're going to start off with an example we looked at in class, which was the study of uh, arthritis in elite soccer players. So I'll open the data here, and you can see this data is entered um, in a contingency table format where we just have to enter the categories of the two variables. So in arthritis, people either had arthritis or they did not have arthritis. We have to enter each of those categories for each of the values of the other variable, which was soccer type, and that people either played elite soccer or they did not play elite soccer. Um, the third column that we have to add is the count of the number of people that go into each cell. So there were 10 people that had arthritis and played elite soccer, 61 people, people that played elite soccer and did not have arthritis. Um, you'll see because we've entered text into both of these variables, they are already entered as nominal variables. The count variable over here, as we can see, must be entered as a continuous variable. To perform our analysis uh, of a contingency table, we simply come up here to analyze, say fit y by x. If we have not uh, specifically identified a predictor and a response, we simply, and are interested in general associations without a causal relationship, we simply move the two variables that we're interested in into the response and factor. And again, since we have entered this data in a contingency table style format, we have to put the count then down here into weight. Press OK. And here is our contingency table analysis, the mosaic plot up at the top, indicating that the conditional distributions of uh, arthritis is a little different between the elite players and the non-elite players. Minimize that for a moment so we can now see the contingency table, the total of 286 individuals in the study. Um, you can look within the table to see the particular row and column percentages, and you can also add the expected count in each cell. So this is exactly as done in class where we can um, determine what the expected count would have been had there been no association. So in this case, had there been no association between arthritis and soccer type, we would have expected 4.7 people to have played both elite soccer and have arthritis. But in fact, we observed 10 as indicated by the top number. And the order of the numbers is count total percent, total out of the entire uh, total out of the column, 52% of all of the people that had arthritis had uh, played elite soccer. Uh, the row percent 14% out of the 71 people that played soccer had arthritis, and the expected number. Further on, we see uh, the Pearson test statistic for the test of no association um, that we calculated in class, and the associated p-value that goes with that Pearson test. And if you hover over it, you get the pop-up that advises you on whether there is evidence for or against the null hypothesis. So that was um, for doing entering data in a contingency table format and doing a uh, chi-squared test of association. Let's look quickly at the Mrs. Bristol example with drinking tea. In this case, you'll see we now have n uh, a different way of entering data where we had the eight observations, eight different cups of tea, and we've entered the value of the two variables for each of the eight cups. In the arthritis example, um, you can see we there were 286 people in the study, but we only had to enter four rows. To have entered this data in a similar way as the Mrs. Bristol example, which had eight cups, we would have had to enter 286 separate individuals. If you have uh, a lot of individuals, it's much easier to enter the count data in this way than it would be to um, enter it in this way where you have to enter a separate row for every individual. In this case, again, we have ordinal variables. We will come up here to fit y by x. Again, we're not interested in whether which is a response or a factor, just a general association. Drag one into each of the x and y variables. Press OK. And in this case, we know from class that this is uh, going to be invalid for a chi-squared test because of the very small cell sizes. And you actually get a warning in JMP that says the average cell count is less than 5. The likelihood ratio chi-squared test is suspect. The chi-squared test is likely going to be invalid. So we must refer down here to the Fisher's exact test, where the p-value for the null hypothesis of no difference between, or no association between the variables is listed, as is the corresponding alternative hypothesis. So you can check your two directional hypotheses. This is indicating that Mrs. Bristol can correctly predict t when t was in the cup first. So that is the direction of her ability to predict. This is the direction, this first one, of um, her complete inability to predict. 
and this third one is the two-sided. Is there any association between what was in the cup first and Mrs. Bristol guessed? So this goes the two one-sided hypotheses and the two-sided hypothesis for general association in the Fisher's exact test. One more quick example is in the cystinosis study. Um, and again, you can see that we've entered the data for all 15 individuals in a contingency table format so that we don't need 15 rows. We just need the two categories of each of the two variables we're interested in and the number of individuals that are in those two categories. Um, in this case, we are also going to do a fit y by x. Again, um, not interested in a specific relationship, just any association at this point. Um, and here we see the same contingency table that we would have seen in class with a total of 15 individuals in it. But as we remember, these 15 individuals represent pairs of data. We are not to use the uh, Pearson chi-squared test here. We must come up here and generate another test, use agreement statistic to add the uh, the McNamara's test, which is also known as the Boker test. And as it, in class, we saw that the difference between the R and S values in the two discordant cells between this cell and this cell, the difference there is 6. Our McNamara test ends up being 6, the absolute value of the difference divided by the sum. And th the p-value for that difference is p of 0 0.0143. So note that this is fairly small, indicating the significance. There is a strong association between the formulation and whether a person improved or not, and we can see here that more people receiving the standard formulation improved compared to the zero people receiving the new formulation. So that's the quick introduction to McNamara's, Fisher's, and the Pearson chi-squared test. One last thing that we'll do is come back to the arthritis example. We're going to do the same analysis. And show you very quickly that we can calculate an odds ratio. Now here again you can come up to this drop down uh, red arrow up at the top and add any test you would like. Minimize the contingency table for now and the odds ratio is shown here. Now this odds ratio is always the odds of the top left cell. So for people that played, uh, so what are the odds of having no arthritis for people that played elite soccer compared to the odds of no arthritis for people that did not play elite soccer. And that odds ratio is, or relative odds, also known as relative odds, is 0.266. So that implies that the odds of not having arthritis in elite soccer is lower than the odds of not having arthritis if you didn't play elite soccer. That's very confusing to say, but as we saw in class, you can invert this to find out the odds of having arthritis if you played elite soccer to having arthritis if you did not. But remember, in JMP, it is always going to work on the odds of the event in the upper left cell compared to the odds of the event in the lower left cell. Uh, and always associated with the odds ratio is the upper and lower 95% confidence interval. So we are 95% confident that an interval such as this has captured the true, me the true odds ratio um, between 0.1 and 0.68. That's the summary of our contingency table analysis in JMP. Please add uh, anything to the comments section if you think I've missed anything.